Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for inviting me to this important conference. I want to apologize for not being able to be with you in California today. Unfortunately, due to the devastating financial developments in Greece, an emergency meeting of the Green Party parliamentarians has been called. Because this situation in Greece will put extraordinary stress on all EU member states and the entire European economy. It has been decided that all members of the German Parliament must stay in Berlin Thursday and Friday for an important vote on the Greece bailout. Ladies and gentlemen, in the past 10 years that has surprised many analysts. The basis of this new industrial revolution is, in addition to various other political law, the Renewable Energy Sources Act with feed-in tariffs. At its center stands the principle of primacy of renewable energy. Moreover, the tariff is designed in a way that it provides certainty of, to investors. These points were crucial to me when drafting the Renewable Energy Sources Act in 1999, which was then adopted in 2000 by the German Parliament. In 2000, the law set a growth target for renewable electricity from 6% in 2000 to 12% in 2010. At the time, many considered this goal to be unrealistic and unattainable. However, in 2009, 16% share of the energy generated in Germany was by renewables, meaning we well exceeded our goal even before 2010. If we maintain the current growth rates by 2020, Germany will already be able to create about 50% of its electricity from renewable energy sources, and by 2030 it will be possible to generate 100% in Germany. This expansion of renewable energy increased the energy security of Germany by reducing the need to purchase cars and increasingly more expensive fossil and nuclear resources. Furthermore, enormous costs for the national economy have been spared. In 2009, the additional cost for the marginal higher electricity prices of 4.5 billion euros were outweighed by the avoided cost of importing oil, gas and coal and uranium was 6.4 billion euro. Moreover, in 2009, external costs for environmental damage amounting to 8 billion euro were avoided. The added cost to the average bill for a three-person household was a mere 6 points, sorry, 2.6 euro a month, which is about 5% of the average total electricity bill. These additional costs are outweighed by a rapid development towards a new industry branch. In 1998, only 30,000 people were employed in the renewable energy sector. In 2010, that number has already increased to 300,000. During the current financial and economic crisis, the renewable energy source sector has become the most important pillar of the German economy. The share of renewable energies are the most successful contribution to climate protection too in Germany with a total reduction of 120 million tons CO2 annually. Ladies and gentlemen, the Californian researchers Jacobson and Delucci from the universities of Stanford and Davis unveiled a plan in November 2009 to switch entirely to renewable energy by 2030 globally. The focal point of this plan is to use the energy of sun, wind and water. The target of a full coverage by renewable energy is, under the right political framework, technologically feasible, economically reasonable and quickly doable. The estimated cost of around 100,000 billion US dollars for Jacobson and Delucci's plan are rather low compared to the estimated 200,000 billion US dollars that the world would, will have to pay for fossil and nuclear energy between now and 2030. So you see, to switch to 100% renewables is cheaper than to go on with conventional energies. Ladies and gentlemen, our experience in Germany demonstrates that protecting the climate by using renewable energy is not a burden but a stimulus to the economy. 
It is a cost-effective way of reaching energy security with domestic and sustainable energy sources, all will, while also preventing national and international struggles over resources. In 2009, I published a paper in Washington, D.C., which contains the most important political measures that made the feed-in tariff law such a success. Unfortunately, I do not have time today to get into the details of this paper today, but you can find it online at my homepage. A full supply of renewable energy would be the most decisive contribution to global climate protection, energy security, conflict prevention and healthcare expansion. This is also a great opportunity for those pioneering countries to become leaders in the industry and to create many new jobs in the export sector. With a growing capacity for mass production, renewable energy technology will also become cheaper. With the exception of bioenergy, renewable energies do not contain fuel costs, which will make them cheaper with no competition from oil, natural gas, coal or uranium in the coming years. By contrast, the cost of conventional fuels will rise in the next few years due to the scarcity of resources, which will bring along serious problems. Scientists of the Energy Watch Group and others have already proved the world has passed its oil peak, with a 3% annual decline in the coming years Global oil production will decline in 2030 to about 50% of today's production. Even the conservative international energy agency in Paris has warned that the world is facing serious economic problems due to the increasing shortages of the availability of oil. Since natural gas, coal and uranium resources are of limited availability, they do not stand a chance to balance the decline of oil. At the same time, nuclear security risks and costs are rising. Germany has already recognized this, and a nuclear phase outlaw was adopted in 2002. No political party in Germany still supports the construction of new nuclear reactors. Ladies and gentlemen, climate change requires not only the conversion to renewable energy, but a further strategy. The switch towards renewable energy would indeed mean that nearly no more CO2 would be issued into the atmosphere, but the concentration of 385 parts per million in the atmosphere is already too high and has led to unexpected problems and risks. It is therefore necessary to create a second strategy to clean the atmosphere of CO2 with a target of 330 parts per million. Again, this is achievable. With new technologies such as a hydrothermal carbonization combined with reforestry, hydrothermal carbonization can turn plants and its side products into biochar in a couple of hours. Biochar can be used in three ways as fuel in a coal plant, as a chemical base, and most notable for CO2 binding in soil. The storage of biochar deposits atmospheric CO2 into soil. At the same time, water storage and generativity rise with the result that more food and bioenergy can be produced. This works better with organic farming than with intensive farming. Right now, I am developing a new climate change strategy and I am seeking allies in the financial, business and political sectors. If you are interested in supporting such a climate change strategy, I would appreciate the opportunity to work together with you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you put together a political framework for 100% renewable energy and cleaning the atmosphere of the CO2, we can reach climate protection, energy security, prevention of conflicts over oil, lower or stop nuclear proliferation, avoid local pollution as oil disaster in the Gulf of Mexico, and create a rapid economic development with many new employment opportunities. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen for your wonderful attention.